Welcome back to another video about a diesel heater. In this video, we'll talk about a Sunster diesel heater. It looks like this. And that's the entire unit already. In terms of unboxing, we have the device itself. We do have a user manual. And there's also a little box included, which you have to open up and see what's inside. But besides that, and up there is another diesel heater, which I taking a deeper look at it and also testing it and working with it. Compared to the other diesel heater, this diesel heater has a different form factor and a couple other features, which I will go through. But first, let's take a look from the side, from, I guess, the front. That's where the hot air should blow out, I assume, from the other side. And that's the rear, I guess, where the air gets sucked in. I have to say, for the Sunster diesel heater, this manual, it's definitely one of the thickest manuals, printed thickest manuals I've seen in a long time. All right, speaking about this unit, a couple features are completely different than the diesel heater I was working with so far and I was using. This diesel heater has an advantage in terms of it has an elevation adjustment. So it means when you go higher in the elevation, the diesel heater acknowledges that and understands it and also can adjust accordingly, as well as it has a Bluetooth app. So you can control it from, I don't know, radius of a couple feet away. So it makes this unit different from the other unit in terms of features. Of course, the form factor is different as you saw it. Those are the dimensions and it does come with automatic altitude compensation. The heater can work in altitudes up to 16,000 feet. So when you wanna go up in the mountains or whatever, that might be a device or a heater to go. It does also come with five kilowatt of power for heat. And it also is capable of 12, 24 volt and 220 volt. And also it should be 110 volts. Fuel, it needs diesel and it has a five liter fuel tank. So that's also bigger in this unit. Uh, fuel consumption, they say it's between 0.1 liter and 0.35 liter per hour, depending on the setting. So we'll try to touch base on that as well. And what you can see here on the side, um, that's basically um, that it also says the rated output is 40 watts. I remember that other diesel heater had the same. I would not be surprised uh, if the component inside might be the same. Um, uh, what I can see here, um, what's different to the other one already, it doesn't have a rubber gasket here. So when you spill diesel, it might flow into here. So you want to clean that and you can open it up with the Phillips screws. I would say we'll assemble it and see what we need to assemble and we'll just use it. So let me try to give you a clear picture of what's included in the packaging. We can see some feet, I assume. And we have a muffler here, power supply, either the 220 or 110 volts. I mentioned this variable, this flexible 110 to 220. Or you can hook it up with this wire to 12 or 24 volt. The air intake filter for the combustion chamber. And then we do have quite a lot of the clamps. Pretty cool is if this one would be pre installed, but surprise. We also have one of those exhaust pipes. And this exhaust pipe was just tucked in here. All right, besides those things I just talked about. Oh, be careful. The screws are just going through. They're just, oh yeah. Be careful, that's a kind of hazardous. Be careful, you can pinch yourself with that. Um, what's also included is this three inch hose here. So it's an aluminum hose, I would guess. And then we also have the air intake hose. The first thing we need to do, ideally look in the user manual and see if there's anything what they say start with. And in our case, we do see in the first page here already, different heater types they have. We're having the horizontal all in one heater. Since this one does apply to this unit here, it looks like the split heater. We don't have that. We have this one on one unit. So we'll try to do the same what we did last time. Connect everything what's needed. The first few things I would say, tip it over. So those feet, they only have one way to go in. Um, you can only slide them in like this. This one also does not, they just spread a little bit more. Oh, this one was the only one which actually clicked in place. I'll just put it in place. The air in the intake and exhaust. Uh, one is bigger than the other one, so the air intake hose, just to see. Kind of a lot of wiggle room. Here it's less. Just want to make sure here there's the fuel line, which goes hopefully pretty straight. Doesn't have any issues. I'll test the exhaust pipe to see which one fits. This one is too big here on this side. So I'll try the other side and here it will fit. So that's for me the indication, all right, I need to use this one. And now comes the part where we will need one of those clamps. So either you wanna use a Phillips head here or um, what is that? Probably one quarter or something like that. It will be very tricky, I feel like. Oh, maybe not. It might be tricky to assemble and close it, but I can see that on the other side here, we should be able to reach it. Nice and tight. 
So that means I'll try to do it this way. You need to be very careful. Those edges are pretty sharp. So keep that in mind, please. Next we'll pull out the air intake, which means I try to push it up here and we do have one clamp. So you might need to compress it. It's up to you if you want to do that a little bit. Maybe you have other clamps. This one is a very tight fit. I want to attach it to here because here's the air intake on this side. It might have a negative influence when you compress it too much. I don't think that's the ideal installation. So this one is wiggling around. Um, I might find a better clamp here, which actually can close thing. Not an ideal clamp in my opinion, but at least I can put it like this. What I don't understand is there are existing elbow 90 degree exhaust pipes like this one, which when you put it all the way in would be perfect bent. So you don't have to bend the big exhaust they give you. I'll replace it and put this one in first. Okay, to give you an understanding what I'm doing here, this is the elbow piece. I did put those pieces together. There we are. So here you can see, like so. So you see, we do have the exhaust pipe here coming out. It's fairly touching anything, but it does a little bit. So ideally the entire hose, so if you have a shorter one, way better, but should go horizontally away. We'll need our muffler. So let's see what fits the best here. They should be pretty much the same, I feel like. I'll use another clamp. Oh, that's quite interesting. This one is way smaller than the other ones. Okay, so the Phillips head is way smaller. Well, let's see how long it takes. All right, Big Bomber. Both of the clamps they delivered with the muffler are crap. They're not going to compress enough. Okay, I got another clamp on. What I will do is most likely get a shorter piece anyways for this one because this is just wiggling around. But for now, I think we got pretty far, which is really good to see and I'm happy about it. The hose later for the hot air will need one or two of bigger clamps. And in case you want to mount it to a board or you want to elevate it because of the pipe, basically it's touching the ground, some wood or whatever. So you want to just put some blocks or whatever underneath. You can use those self-tapping screws they put in the package. You don't have to, you can use it, um, as well as if you have holes you want to pre-trill, they also put in more bolts, which is nice. Since it's pretty late here, I decided to wait with this test for tomorrow. So that means that the only thing what I will do is filling in some diesel. In this video, I will use the 110 volts. So that means there is a kind of brown and a blue wire. I think you, it's hard to see here, but... The brown one has a red crimp or heat shrink and the blue one has a black one. But, but what's a little difficult or hard to see, this one has some burn marks, um, probably too hot or whatever. I have to make sure that this is not, because it looks like the insulation is yeah, broken. So you see, you see the wires inside, so I have to fix that. So that means you can see here red and black and what you can do, just unscrew. Uh, I actually do miss a spring a lock washer, just to make sure that it's not getting loose. And those wires will be attached red to red, black to black. But after the washer, I added a spring washer and then use the appropriate color for the appropriate terminals. The only thing left, fill in some diesel. Uh, make sure when you open it that nothing else goes in. Ideally, you have a little filter or something you can use. And close it. So, what I could say now, but we cannot see it, but we'll check tomorrow. We have a little uh, lookout or a little level basically where the diesel should be. Uh, as much as I would imagine and think, this entire area should be for the canister for the tank itself. So it means it should be kind of this size, five liters. So this time, as I promised, we'll be using a normal one or 10 volt power supply. And here we do have the device itself. So. I'll get it started in a few minutes. All right, that's pretty much it. Let's see if we can start it up. We have OK, down, power on, up, and it looks like light. So let me hit the power on. And as I mentioned, it's important that you have the exhaust pipe going as much horizontal as possible. So I'll take this one off here as well. 
And as much as I know, you can take this off as well. Just pull a little bit away in case you just want to have it somewhere else. As always, here on the display, you can see what's happening. Try to get as close and clear as possible. Right now, it's set to Celsius. Looks like it's 1201, which is not entirely correct. Maybe let's, let's just see how far we can get. I don't know if you hear that, but there's the pump sound. First time priming it. And by the way, we do have an app, BLE, I downloaded it. And there we have the device. Try to connect it. Nice, and here we can see what's happening. Ignition preparation, that's a really nice information. First time heating up. I don't know if you can see it here. This exhaust. It's very hard to see that it is actually here fuming a little bit. To give you an idea, we are at the exhaust at 2010 Fahrenheit. Now we have a stable combustion. And everything you need to do is just temperature max limit. Oh nice. I have a 16 feet hose connected here as you can see a little longer one. Um, but it's not all the way wrapped out. It's probably like three or four feet long and I have 140, 155, 160 as a temperature coming out. And I also got myself one of those carbon monoxide detectors that I want to use. Yeah, it's quite nice. Level four, level six. What I can hear is a little vent on top of the tank, which is quite funny. There's some, some noise and some compression happening, I guess. Not compression, but over pressure probably. So there's automatic level mode. It looks like you can have the running level adjusted, which is not temperature driven. But then you can go to the manual gear mode, which has a temperature limit, which is 36, it looks like. Just adjust the temperature and then it adjusts the running level accordingly. Quite cool to see that. And it reacts pretty quick, which I enjoy actually pretty well. And you can tell when there's, when it tries to suck in a more diesel, this little thing is going up and down. So it tries to suck in more diesel. At the end, that's quite nice. I'll let it run a little bit and then uh, we'll see if we can do more testing. So I have to see if that is really good because I think it's pretty hot here. Anyways, um, I might replace this, replace this hose really quick. But until then, we're gonna change time maybe and also change from Celsius to Fahrenheit, which means we have to click here on the settings wheel for oh, that's the mode change you can do. But we wanna hold, press and hold it for four seconds, and as soon as it changes, up here is the F0, which applies to the time. Then we go with up or down. Then F1, F2, F3, F4, F5, and F5 is Celsius, so now hitting to confirm the settings button. Now C is blinking, Celsius, now we change it with the up or down, confirm, and now, on a, now it's not blinking anymore, now we hit the on off to go all the way back, and now we have Fahrenheit. For the time, hitting the setup button for four seconds, and now we are in time already, we confirm, and now we can see it changed to the time. Now we can adjust it accordingly. Try to think. Ding, ding. Now we 
confirm it with the setting and exit the menu with the on off. That's all. Temperature from Celsius to Fahrenheit, but in the app I just disconnected or reconnected and it's still in Celsius, so it didn't change here. That's one thing to be aware of, so you might have to learn and understand what Celsius and Fahrenheit is. <laughs> For me it's not a problem, but I don't know about you. I just set it to the to very low setting. The lowest is 80 degrees Celsius. So you can see in display it is going back and forth, a little bit is blinking. But uh, yeah, it reacts pretty fast and as soon as you just crank it up, it's itself is cranking up and you can hear the little tank vent. All right, that's the side of the device itself and you can see here's the tank level. So you need some light from the other side shining through a little bit so you can see it. All right, that's quite interesting. It did actually stop with narrow code. E05. So you can see it, the overheating protection. Quite interesting to see that it stopped running level 7, by the way. Just did let it, let it run a little bit. All right, for E5, we have E5 here, overheating. Check the air inlet and outlet whether blocked. My assumption is that it's the outlet which might be blocked or because of the hose. I'm now turning it off. We'll restart when ready. It looks like I'm still connected, so Bluetooth is on as long as you have the power connected. That's cool. Let me see if I can get it back on. Hold to start. All right, let's give it another test. Let's back up. Well, it's temperature maximum. We want to go to automatic levels. We want to level seven. And I did indeed. And I did just that you see it here at this house. I'm also testing our carbon monoxide. So let's see how this performs. And if we're running into an overheating situation again. And I'll let it run for a couple more minutes or longer. And we'll see if it will survive the <laughs> burn-in test. This play in the bottom, you see it's on full. And we are measuring carbon monoxide, not at zero, it is at 14.15. The hose of the exhaust is over there, so it might be possible. Now it looks like everything is normalized. I have the maximum running right now, and with the shorter hose, the other one was winding up, um, and most likely plucking the outlet, which means here on top it got super hot, I checked that one. Now it's way better, it's just pushing out the heat, it's not getting super hot on top, so it works well. Um, that's something which I had to learn probably for this test, which I didn't do before, but keep that in mind. Everything is still burning in. I'll let us run for longer, and then I might have a follow-up video in the elevated area just to see how it performs up there, if it's automatic and everything else. For here, it does run, it does work. It's easy to connect. I like, I like what it can do. I like that it does have the feature of auto adjustment, and it's very powerful, and it has the Bluetooth app, which works amazingly good. And uh, it's up to you which mode you want to use, level mode or temperature mode. And of course you can change Celsius, Fahrenheit or not. What's weird, I just see here, I changed it to Fahrenheit as you saw, turned it off and on. I did never completely power it off, but it's back to Celsius here. So I don't know how persistent those settings are, but as of now it does work. It cranks up and it runs. So now we have to do the long-term test and see how it performs. And yeah, if you have any questions, please let me know. Because I think my tests are done for now. There will be a follow-up video on this unit for sure. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments section below. And if you like that stuff, subscribe to the channel and like the video. Thank you. Cheers.